Well, hello there. God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And yes, it's me inviting you to join me tonight for Bible study. I am so excited about the things that the Lord is doing, and I want to thank you for your response. I have heard from multitudes uh, from various places in the country who have reached out to me concerning the things that we talked about as we were teaching on the triumphant life. And we uh, were talking about, in particular, the inordinate affection coming from Colossians chapter number three and um, verse five. Wherefore, it says, modify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, and it says, inordinate affection. And we were talking about, uh, as we talked about this, we talked about the wicked sin of incest and how First uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul uh, rebuked the church at Corinth. First Corinthians, I mean, chapter five, how Paul rebuked the church at Corinth, for there was a man there who was in a, who had married his stepmother. And, uh, and so this brought incest into the church. And we've heard from so many people who are suffering silently. They're carrying the wicked uh, stain and the shame of having been sexually abused by the very people whom they trusted the most. Let me tell you something, dads. Let me tell you something, moms. Let me tell you something, relatives. Uh, listen, we, God has entrusted us with being the protectors of the children. God has entrusted us with being the very people who are supposed to prevent some of the things that many of you are allowing to take place. And I believe that you really need God to wash your heart and to clean your mind and to deliver you if you uh, can see children through a sexual lens anyway. How wicked is that? And uh, it is not the will of the Lord uh, that we marry our first cousins or second cousins. And, uh, uh, on, the Bible speaks of uh, of uh, uh, unclothing the nakedness or seeing the nakedness of our aunt or uh, our uncle or so forth and so on. There is such a thing as uh, decency. There is such a thing, my friends, believe it or not, as normal. And many times here, we talk about the sins of uh, promiscuity, homosexuality, lesbianism, and those things need to be talked about. I never understand any minister who criticize a minister, myself, or anyone else who talk about these wicked uh, practices that take place in society. But we've also got to keep before the people the horrible sin of incest. And I want to say to every person who's been a victim of it, ask God to, for listen, ask God to forgive the person who did what they did to you. And listen, forgive yourself. It was not your fault. You are not to blame. And do not allow, do not allow that particular uh, thing, that incident, that wicked occurrence to define you for the rest of your days. For it is not the will of God that you be defined by something like this. It is the will of God that you embrace the Lord and thank God that he blessed you to survive and you go forward in the things of God. Live your life and let it go. Don't you live the rest of your days in the shadow of a trauma like that. I hear you. Somebody saying, well, preacher, that's easier said than done. And you are a hundred percent correct. Someone else is thinking, oh, if it's never happened to you, you have no idea what you're talking about. Well, for those of us who have never suffered that kind of sexual abuse, we thank God that we haven't uh, suffered that. And we, we pray for those of you who have. But I will say to you, do not fight deliverance. Do not fight fight. Don't fight to keep the door closed. Some people, believe it or not, my friends, and I don't know why I'm going in this direction. I'm talking to someone. Some have romanticized. Some have 
fallen in love with their trauma. You have embraced the worst day of your life and you, you insist upon living your life uh, in the shadow of that, uh, uh, that, that thing. Well, I'm here to tell you, God has better for you. The Lord has deliverance for you. The Lord loves you. And listen, he is cleansing you and touching you right now. Just stay, stay with the Lord. If you don't know the Lord, give your heart to Jesus Christ. Ask him to come into your life right now. Dear Jesus, I, I surrender to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Oh God, I believe that you died and rose again. I know that you love me and I accept you in my heart right now. I, I give all my pain to you, all of my brokenness to you, and I accept you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, just that simple prayer. Jesus heard your prayer and the Lord is working on your heart right now. And if you walk with him and hold to him and hold to his hand, he will keep you. Listen. Uh, I'm excited about tonight. I want you to pick up the latest uh, uh, issue of uh, Christianity Today. They featured yours truly. Here's who stopped going to church during the pandemic. Well, I tell you, uh, people stopped going to church because preachers closed the churches. And they couldn't go because the house of God was closed and all kinds of problems have come from that. Uh, alcoholism is up. Suicide is up. Depression is up. Loneliness now is, is, is actually, they've been talking about it. How people are struggling with being alone. Well, uh, the, the government and these talking heads and governors and mayors sent people home, closed the house of God shut people up in their house, in their homes. And, uh, and now we're seeing the deleterious effects of those decisions. So my friends, let me tell you, God has life for you. The Lord has life for you, not just existence, but life. He wants you to live and to live triumphantly. And tonight I am going to be talking about just that. The things that we need to take off and the things that we need to put on so that we can live that triumphant life. The God of the Bible wants you to live your best life and be the best version of yourself during your earthly uh, sojourn. And then when the Lord is through with us, he's going to take us home to be with him forevermore. So he's speaking and, and, and with everything that's going on in the world, God has his eyes on you and he loves you and he wants to revive you and to bless you and cause you to uh, even in times like these, enjoy your life. Uh, the Bible teaches that he have given us all things to enjoy and to live holy and to live clean. So I'm talking to people today who are beloved of God, forgiven of God and set apart by God. Beloved of God, forgiven by God, and set apart for the Lord's work. Beloved of God, forgiven by God, and set apart for God. It's called living the triumphant life, and we're going to talk about it tonight uh, here at the Upper Room Church of God of Christ during our Bible study. <laughs> See how I slid that in? <laughs> yes, doing Bible study. We're going to study this thing and we're going to see what God has to say. And when we finish uh, hearing what the Lord has to say about it, we're going to sing and we're going to shout and we're going to praise the Lord because God's word is the final word and God's word is a good word. We'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Whether you're here live or joining us uh, on uh, th th throughout streaming, on uh, YouTube live, Facebook live, we love you guys. Thank you for how you stand by us, how you tune in, how you share with the upper room. And uh, I have some things to tell you from the Lord, and they're going to bless you. We'll see you tonight.